because most of the people who might be listening to this podcast have a selfish motive to understand what really like uh, f- so for example when i used to interview for my internships or my full time jobs before i did my i i i did my graduate school and later on my phd is understanding what an interview looks is definitely helps a lot before your preparation so at least for software development once i learned that it is not the answer that they want you they don't want the code they just want to see their problem solving skills so they don't want the code to run itself it's just like how you think or approach the problem and it's in in that particular few seconds that the engineer makes out is he or she a good candidate for that company or not so if you are a person i i i i, I don't know if, if you have uh, interviewed people uh, for your roles but if 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 you have interviewed then can you tell us what are these subtle metrics that you have for yourself or i don't know in in general nvidia has for people who are interviewing and in general um, let it be more, much more general you can just take it uh, nvidia out of the equation is what are the subtle metrics that you would want to see in that person while you are interviewing because definitely uh, we talked in this podcast a lot of things about product management in general but you definitely don't see all of those skills just right away when the person is speaking to you so in that particular interview what are the things that you see that at least he or she should showcase in order to be selected for further process of the interview right um first of all no of course like you need to know your stuff right um like for example if you come in and interview for a ai system job role but you don't know anything about how to not just like building the product you don't know anything about the competitive world you don't know anything about how to take this solution to market like for example at nvidia we don't sell direct we sell through our channel partners and who are the channel partners that could take this on and how would a system like that come out to be a direct competitor or a friendly competition to one or two other of our potential partners how is that going to be a sensitive topic i think those comes with experience of like just you will have to experience that to really know yourself and immediately those who know come in they answer it with no fluff no bs right it's like i know this feel very very well so that's number one um that's definitely uh, from the kpi perspective that's very very important um and then the second thing is um I would say a lot more on the culture fit perspective. Like it, are you a humble person? No a lot but still humble or are you an arrogant type of person? Uh can you handle stress uh very well? And there's it depends on the role itself, right? So those those are some of the culture fit aspect of it. Like if we were to ask you to work on the weekend, what's your reaction to that? Um so those are all kind of like different people are trained differently and they were raised differently so i think those are things good to know in an interview and then on top of that um is um do you i i would say like a lot relate to even how you see um yourself in this role because one of the most devastating thing could happen is you are potentially a good fit in this role because of your skill set and all that but you are actually eyeing for something else like for example you don't want to just be a product manager you want to run a company of your own and i designed this role specifically for you to be able to take on this product management role for the next 5 years and that doesn't fit your personal goal so have making sure this job role is created for that candidate and um, that candidate specific dream and um and goals are are somewhat aligned or at least we could be creative in terms of setting KPIs to have that personal development professional development built in and i can't stress that enough because a lot of folks ended up coming to a certain job role the managers ended up abusing his or her skill set over and over again just do the same thing because that person is so great at it and never kept that person's future growth perspective in mind and that's um we would just end up losing that candidate and it usually takes about a good 9 months to really know if you had a bad candidate and then to fire that person ugh, that's another thing um and then to rehire and then wait another 9 months to figure out that's a good candidate so i think early on there's a lot that you will find out um whether it's a it's a good candidate or not and then another thing i like to do is actually give the candidates a very real scenario of that job role that's happening day to day and then i just want to ask them exactly like you said how they think 
how would they prioritize their role? What are some of the questions that they will ask? And what are some of the things that could potentially be a roadblock, roadblock that, that they should think through? And sometimes and, like, as, as little as like, oh, if an engineer doesn't want to do the work if documentation is not fully in place. But that's, and you just can't get the engineer to do work. It doesn't even matter what it is. And he was just like, documentation is not ready and I'm not gonna do my work. And for like for things like that, you I think there it just needs to come out during the interview to really understand how a person works. Um, otherwise, no matter how talented that engineer is, work cannot get done, which is just not a good fit, unfortunately. <laughs>